So Divi have just recently dropped a massive bombshell. They've gone back, reimagined the whole editor and made it more modular. This should make things a lot quicker. But does it in the real world? Well, join me as I run some tests on a pretty typical Divi website to see exactly what's going on and if there is that speed improvement that they're promising. Let's take a look together. So let's take a look at the article that they released about speeding up Divi. Now I'm not going to go over this, you can look at this yourself because in all honesty there's a ton to watch here and I also recommend checking out the video that they released as well, all about what they've done and the comparisons that they've done and things like that. I would take parts of this with a small pinch of salt if I'm honest but it's still good to look through and have a little see exactly what they've done to improve things. And Credit where it's due, they have gone back and made a massive difference to how Divi is actually built, and this is one of those things that I've been saying for quite a long time when it comes to, you know, Elementor. You see, if you've seen any of my live streams, you'll know I've talked about a modular approach where things can be enabled and disabled as and when they're needed inside the editor. So the front end potentially becomes quicker, and that's kind of what Divi have gone ahead and done. So kudos for doing that. So check this, this out. I'll put a link in the description below. I don't want to bore you with that too much. Now, what I've done is I have literally pulled in one of their pre-built templates. I pulled in one that's got quite a lot of pretty big images because I kind of thought, well, this is going to be probably a harder test than maybe some uh, sort of smaller sites that don't have as many images being included. So as you can see on screen, there's a lot of images and they're all pretty much full screen kind of images. So that's what I'm working with. That's what we're starting with. So let's take a look at the first speed tests. I haven't done anything yet except for, let me just quickly go into SiteGround to show you what's going on there. I've got all the normal things enabled for the server caching. So you can say this isn't necessarily a fair test, but most hosting these days is going to have some type of caching included. And by default, that's normally enabled. So I'm giving this a kind of real world, not a sort of synthesized kind of setup. So we've got the NJNX di uh, direct delivery, I've got dynamic cache, and I've got memcache. So all these are enabled. If we hop over there and take a look at Divi itself, these are the out of the box options that are enabled inside the Divi performance setup. So this is everything that's enabled, everything except for the deferred additional third party scripts, which we will take a look at a little later. I also have SG Optimizer enabled, and inside there, all I've done is I've left everything default except for the media optimization, and I've set this up to create WebP versions of the images because this is something that I think all sites should be doing anyway. You should be operating uh, WebP to give you the best performance for your images to make everything a little bit better for more modern browsers. So that's enabled. Everything else is stock straight out of what uh, SG Optimizer uses. And that's basically it. So I'll purge the cache just to make sure that everything is purged. This is set for new images to be automatically converted to WebP as well. So that's where we are. So let me just go ahead, copy the URL for the site. And let's just pop that into both Google PageSpeeds and run that and also GT Metrics and run that on there. Okay, so these are fairly stock settings so we can kind of see now how these come back and if we've got a good starting point or a pretty poor starting point. well actually that's that's pretty good 82 on mobile and if we hop over to desktop we're getting a 90 so we're already starting with a pretty solid setup now this is using siteground so you just know that, that that's the hosting i'm using but is the stock basic plan that's it so I think that's already a pretty solid starting point. Let's take a look at GT Metrics. Unfortunately, there's quite a few options there in front of us, so we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, and there's our GT Metrics score back. Performance, not as good as I kind of would have thought it would be, but structure, 100%, largest content full paint, 1.1 seconds. That is pretty respectable when it kind of comes back. And like I say, this is a pretty heavy uh, image-based page. And as you can see, We've got some low issue kind of things to check out, but that's a pretty solid start and much, much better than what I was kind of getting when I was running tests with a different setup that was coming back in the 40s, should we say, when it come to work with PageSpeed Insights on mobile. And when it came to GT Metrics, yeah, we weren't getting great on there either. So we've got a solid starting point. So what else do we have? And let's take a quick look at the settings that we kind of have now as well. So let's go into our site. Now we could go ahead and start to tweak this and go through all those kinds of settings, but I don't really want to get too stuck into that because I think every setup is going to be 
different and every uh, tool that you may use for optimization, whether you use something like SG Optimizer, you could be using Swift, you could be using WP Rocket, they're all gonna have slightly different ways of working. As a great starting point, that is pretty, pretty solid. So let's go and take a look at the options we have in the performance settings. So this is kind of what they've done. They've stripped things out and they've made it a more modular framework. And as you can see, we can enable a modular framework, dynamic CSS, and the kind of overarching thing of what they've done here with this update is to say, okay, instead of every time you load a page in, it loads everything to do with Divi, all the CSS for the entire site, all the reliant libraries for all the different widgets, even things that you don't use, they're stripping that back. So what they're saying is now, it will look at what's on the page, what's not being used, and unload those kinds of things, or defer those so they don't get loaded in. That is what I'm talking about when I say a modular kind of building setup. And again, this is where I say that Elementor really should have adopted this from the get-go. So these are the options. Everything is enabled as default, except for the defer additional third-party scripts, which potentially could cause some issues, obviously, if you have multiple different plugins installed so this is something you would really have to test that if you enable it but let me just enable it we'll save our changes we'll go ahead we'll purge the cache from here and we'll also go over into SiteGround and purge any cache on there so I'm going to purge the mem cache the dynamic cache we're going to purge that and the ngin thingy one we'll just disable that and re-enable it so hopefully that will at least clear it out so this is now Uncached. The only caching that may be going on is inside the browser, but that shouldn't have any effect on these page speed scores. So let's go ahead. GT Metrics is a little bit backed up at the moment. So we'll run that test first. That might take a little while. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's 260 jobs in front of me. So let's go ahead now and test this out on Google Page Speed. We'll analyze that again and we'll see what we come back with now with that enabled. Okay, and that gives us a lower score. So Probably not the best thing to do there then. And this is what you're going to have to do when it comes to optimizing these. There's no out-of-the-box solution that fits every single server setup. Each one is going to be independent. I'm going to run that test again, though, just to make sure that there's a cached version because no one else is visiting this site. So we just want to make sure that it does get cached because the site is just not really being seen by anybody. So, And we do get a bit of a speed improvement. You can see this is something. And as I've always said, when it comes to work with any speed test, things that are server-reliant, in other words, when your site has to sort of send that data over to the browser, those kinds of things, the, the speed tests and so on, there's always going to be fluctuations in that because at any given second, there could be a surge of traffic, there could be less traffic. So you do have to take these with a varying degree of, you know, sort of a pinch of salt, shall we say. Desktop, what are we looking at? 99 on desktop, that is pretty respectable. So there is room for improvement. And let's take a look at GT Metrics. That is going to take a few minutes. So... I'll pause the video here and I'll come back when we get the results on GT Metrics and see if we get a, an improvement or a degradation. Let's take a look. Okay, and we are back with the GT Metric scores. And as we can see, it has actually had a bit of a marked increase. We gain A scores, 90 for performance, 100 for structure. Our largest content full paint is still under one second, which is great. Total blocking time is a little bit high, but again, these are kinds of things I'm sure we could tweak to get a little bit better. So, what are my takeaways from this? Well, I think the most important takeaway here is that Divi has actually become a viable option to build a website around now, if speed, which it should be, is important to you. Hopefully what this kind of first look and my initial experience is, and that's kind of what this is, this is not an exhaustive overview of how to set it up and configure it and tweak it. This is just a basic look for someone that doesn't really have a huge amount of experience using Divi to see what kind of results I could get without too much effort and without spending any money other than your hosting. So hopefully this has demonstrated that to you and give you maybe the impetus to go out and take a look at Divi in a little bit more detail yourself. But for me, I think it's a marked improvement that's definitely been a long, long time coming. And I think a lot of other page builders that are out there that have been sort of, should we say, resting on their laurels for quite some time really should go back and take a look at the way Divi has gone back and integrated that modular building process into this update to Divi. This is something I've been talking about for quite some time, as you probably know, if you've seen my live streams. But let me know your thoughts. Would you consider using Divi now? Do you already have a lifetime and you've kind of put it on the shelf and you've not looked at it because of these issues? For me, I'm not still not the biggest fan of the editing experience. As many of you know, I've been pretty vocal about that side of things. But this has given me 
more of a push to go and potentially take a look at creating some content and maybe even try building a website or two using Divi. So if you'd like to see some content on this, probably more so on the dynamic side than just how to build it because I think there's already great tutorials out there how to use that. Let me know in the comment section below, but give me your feedback. What do you think of these improvements? What do you think about this modular way in which Divi has gone back and reimagined, shall we say, the way they built their, their builder? Plus, this is only the first round of changes. Apparently, there are more coming that should optimize even further. But let me know in the comment section your thoughts, feelings, and your opinions on this update, because I'd love to hear them. As always, all the links that are applicable are in the description below. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, drop those in the comment section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.